Hello legends. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new structured outputs chat GPT completion in your make.com scenario. So OpenAI recently introduced the structured outputs and this lets you get your chat GPT completion and then make it respond in a JSON formatted output, which is perfect because you can then plug that output directly into an API call. So I'm not going to go through this step by step. You can actually come into here and read this, uh, but it explains exactly how to make the API call. But later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how you can use this and then get ChatGPT to create the schema for you. So back in make.com, I've got a scenario here, which is going to accept a new customer support ticket. It's gonna process it with the ChatGPT completion. And then I'm gonna plug the JSON response directly into a Zendesk API call. And I'm gonna to respond to the customer in Zendesk. And to demo that, I'm gonna hit run once. Open up my VS code. And this is my message that I'm sending in. So I'm basically the customer saying I need some help with troubleshooting. And then I have an API call where I'm targeting the uh, make.com webhook. So let's go node test.js. Let's fire this off. Perfect. We received the information. We've made the chat GPT completion call. And then we've created a new ticket in Zendesk. So let's check out Zendesk now. Let's refresh this. And here we go less than a minute ago and we've got a nicely formatted response. So on make.com, I'm gonna break down each of these steps, like what happened everywhere. So the webhook received the information that we sent from VS Code. So for here, you would just get your Zendesk ticket and make it send that ticket information into this webhook, or you could send a voice note into here, you can send an image into here, you can send a, like a podcast transcript or anything like that into your webhook, and then you can process it in the exact same way with the chat GPT completion. Uh, but you can see here, my input is just a text that I had from VS Code. And to make this dynamic, I want to insert the variable uh, into here. So whatever request I have coming in through my webhook, I can just plug it into my chat GPT completion. Now I've got a text parser here, which takes the variable from the webhook and replaces any new line, which is the forward slash n with a space so that when I plug it into my API call, I'm not breaking any of the JSON formatting. So if I just plug it in directly from the webhook into here, and I try and make this API call, I'm going to get an error saying that I've got some unwanted character in my JSON string. So that's what the text parser does. It just takes the new lines out, replaces it with a space, and then we feed the parsed variable directly into our call here. So to break down this API call, if you're watching this, obviously when this video was released, there currently is no node. There is no chat GPT node for this, this kind of completion. So I'm using a HTTP call, but if you watch this a few months from now, there most likely will be a node, but the approach will be the exact same. So we have our URL, which is the completions URL. We're using a post method. We have our authorization, uh, which is the bearer and our OpenAI API key. We're using a uh, content type, application JSON, our raw body, and we're feeding this in here. So this is probably the most difficult bit to create, but we'll run through how to create that later on. So we have the schema created here. Again, we're inserting the variable from the text parser. And then we have our specific response format here. For this, I just went to the Zendesk developer docs, and then I got what kind of format I need for my API call, and I reverse engineered it for my JSON schema. So then when we get our response, if we look at the data, our entire response looks like this. But really, all we need is what's within this content uh, variable here, because this is the actual body that we're gonna be plugging into the Zendesk API call. So to extract this, we use the parse JSON node, where we're feeding in the raw data, and then I'll show you how to create a new data structure so you can get the appropriate information out. But then we're converting the entire response here into components that we can extract. So here's the content. And then this content is what we plug directly into this API call here. And uh, you can see it's choices message content. It was the exact same one before. And then Again, we'll just, we'll build this out from scratch anyway. All right, so now that we've demoed the scenario, we've seen that it works, we've seen the new ticket in Zendesk, and then we've broken down each node one by one. Let's start rebuilding this. So to rebuild this, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna start off by getting a webhook, a custom webhook. I'm gonna make this the main entry point. I'm gonna click add new webhook. I'm gonna generate a new webhook URL. So let's copy this address to the clipboard. Let's go to VS Code and let's change this URL to be this new webhook. So now when I fire off this API call, it's going to target this webhook. So let's run some dummy data into here. Let's go node test.js. 
Perfect. So we have our bundle. Hi, I need help troubleshooting my computer. So next we need a text parser. Text parser. And we're going to be using the replace node. So from here, we want to take the new line, which is this. We want to replace it with a space. And our text input is going to be the text input from the webhook, which is this. Now let's hit OK. Next, we need to make a request with a HTTP call node. So let's go HTTP, make a request. And now we need to fill out all the details here. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a hack on how you can build out this API call super easily. Let's go to the OpenAI documentation for the structured output. I'm just gonna copy the entire page. And then over in ChatGPT, I'm going to say, here is some information. Can you please learn it and let me know when you are ready for new instructions? Then I'm going to paste the entire page. Okay, so now this chat GPT can build out the API call for us. So can you build me an API call in curl? So we're building it out in curl instead of JavaScript or Python, because this is gonna give us the raw URL that we're using for the API call. It's gonna give us the headers. It's gonna give us the raw body so that when we're in make.com, we can actually get this information, the URL, what method we're using, the raw body, the headers. It's gonna be super easy. So can you build me an API call in curl that has a structured JSON schema that I can insert into a Zendesk API call. So over in the Zendesk docs, here is the JSON object that we need to insert into the API calls body. So I'm going to copy this and you would do the exact same if you wanted to create a new task in ClickUp or a new product in Shopify. Just go to the documentation, figure out what the body of the API call is, and then do what I'm doing here. Just reverse engineer it with ChatGPT. Can you make the output JSON schema match this JSON object? which is a sample of what Zendesk needs for the API call. Make the agent be a customer support assistant and let me insert a dynamic variable, which is going to represent the ticket. Okay, let's see what comes out of this. So as you can see, uh, curl, we have the URL, we've got our authorization, the content type, and then we have our body. So this is the API body, which is the model that we need to use, the message, you are a helpful customer support assistant, please structure your response. Okay, cool, that's not bad. Generate a JSON object for this, ticket details. Okay, that's not bad as well. And then our schema is here. All right, so let's just copy this to here. Okay, so let's go raw body, content type is going to be application JSON, and let's paste that into here. Let's expand this to make it easier to see. And okay, we wanna put the details into here. So I'm going to insert the parse text as the variable, generate, a response to this customer support ticket. Okay, and over here we have content, you're a helpful customer support assistant. That's actually all I really need for now. I'm happy with that. Okay, perfect. So now let's get our URL. Let's copy this, paste it here. We'll be using the post method. All right, and let's pause here for now. So I wanna test that this API call works. So let's go to run once, go to VS code and fire this off, node test.js. Okay, we have some problem here. I'm just gonna copy this directly and paste it into chat GPT. Okay, I'm a bit of a goofball. I didn't put my API call, uh, API key into there. which makes sense. I'm just gonna copy it from here. OK, 
okay, let's go, okay, run once, node test.js, missing required parameters, okay, perfect, so now we're going to be actually fixing the JSON uh, schema, so I'm just going to put this error here, that the name parameter is missing from the JSON schema, let's fix it by adding the name, okay, perfect. So now we're finished. Let's copy this schema again. Oh, actually what I want to do, I want to use this because we have our variable inserted here and we've updated some of our instructions. So I'm going to say, can you edit this for me? And now we should get our actual current body back. Let's copy this. Perfect, perfect. Let's give it another go. Run once. Okay, so that worked. Let's look at the data object and we have the information that we need. Beautiful. So now let's parse out what we need to get. So parse JSON. So the string that we're going to be inserting is this data string. Then we want to create a new data structure. So I'm going to go to here, go to data, and I'm going to copy this entire structure because that's what, like this is the actual structure that we want to parse out. So over here, I'm going to go create a new structure. I'll just leave it as that. Let's click generate. I'm going to paste in the exact same thing that I just copied. I'm going to click generate save, hit OK. And now let's run it again and let's see what structure uh, we get out of this JSON module. So let's go run once. Back in VS Code, node test.js, we're firing it off. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so let's go choices, one, messages, and we have content isolated, beautiful. Okay, and now all we need to do is recreate this uh, API call to create a new ticket in Zendesk. Um, I'm not going to recreate it. I'm just going to duplicate it. And it's a basic API call. So we have our URL, which you can get from the developer docs. So if you want to use this for Zendesk, you can use the Zendesk docs. If you want to use it for ClickUp, Shopify, or whatever else, just go to the documentation there. And I'm using the appropriate post method. I've got my authorization. And then I have a uh, raw body application JSON. And then over here, I'm just gonna backspace that. And I'm gonna insert what we have, which is our uh, choices, go into message and then click content. And now we have that specific section, which is gonna structure the body of our API call to Zendesk. So let's give this a go. Let's click run once, go to VS code, click node test.js run this and see what happens. Okay, perfect. Let's go to Zendesk, go back into our inbox. And less than a minute ago, we had this ticket come in. So we have our subject, we've got our response and everything else we need. So we have a response generated to the customer. All right, there you go, guys. If you enjoyed this make.com scenario build, please let me know in the comments below. Just let me know what kind of stuff you want to see. I'd love to make more videos that are more interesting to you. So yeah, please comment what you want to see. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you around. All right, see ya.